Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is Physics Chapter 11, Wave Behavior, Video 4. Today's topic is standing wave. The objectives are know the definition of a standing wave, understand how standing waves are produced, be able to determine whether conditions for standing waves are met, and be able to determine the location of nodes and antinodes on a standing wave and the means of their production. Standing wave pattern. So standing wave is actually not a wave. Standing wave is a wave pattern that results when two waves on the say, have the same frequency and wavelength and amplitude. Two exactly same waves travel in the opposite direction and interfere. The top one going to the right, the bottom, the bottom one going to the left. And standing wave pattern is formed as a result of a perfectly timed interference of two waves passing through the same medium. A standing wave is not actually a wave. A standing wave is a pattern, is an interference pattern. Nodes and antinodes in a standing wave. So here is another animation of waves. So nodes is a point of a zero displacement. That point, you can put your finger there, you will not disturb the wave. That's called a nodes. Nodes is the result of destructive interference. The two point cancels out. Antinode, on the other hand, is the top or down. So antinode actually is the one that moves. It can be either going up or down. As you can see, a wave seems like in the both place at the same time. No. It's either up or down. It's just going so fast. Looks like in the two places at one time. So that's the antinode, the highest and lowest point. The distance between the two successive nodes here and here, that's a half a wavelength. Stand, standing waves are harmonics. Standing wave patterns are only created within a medium at a specific frequency of vibrations. So a lot of instruments have standing waves. The music notes, those are harmonics. So this one could be an animation of a string on a guitar to produce, the, this is called a first harmonic. So this is a standing wave. It's just going up and down like this. So you may see a picture like this, the top, either the point is either at the top or down. So this point is called antinode. At the end point is called nodes. And <clears throat> this one is called the first harmonic. It's just one antinode. When you have two antinodes, that's called a second harmonic. When you have three antinodes, that's called third harmonic. Again, this is just picture because it's going so fast. Seems like a point either up or down can be up or down at the same time, but in fact, it can only be either up or down. Okay, to create a standing wave, the length of the string L, the length L of the string must be the integral part of half a lambda. If that condition is not satisfied, you cannot create a harmonic. For example, when you have a first harmonic, N equals to one, the first N equals to one, L has to be half. The length of the string has to be half the wavelength because that's the length of half a wavelength. When you have second harmonic, L equals to 2, N equals to 2, L in this case equals to 1 lambda. And for third harmonic, the L is 1 and a half of the wavelength. That's 1 and a half. Standing wave can also create, be created for a uh, in longitudinal wave, sound. This is a standing wave for sound waves. This is the standing wave when you play like flute or clarinet wood instruments. That's the wave. That's the air molecules going back and forth. That's a standing wave. Standing wave can only be created according to the length of your instrument. Now let's take a look at the relationship between instrument the, the length of the instrument and the possible harmonics. So first, let's see the number of nodes and antinodes. So this is a first harmonic. So the number of nodes have two, antinodes is one. For second harmonic, you'll have the nodes has to be one, two, three nodes, and antinodes have two. And 
uh, the nodes for the third harmonic, you have four, and anti nodes have three. So the anti nodes is just one less than the nodes. So you can feel the rest on your own. Now let's take a look lambda, the wavelength, and L. The wavelength, this is half of the wavelength. So the wavelength in this case has to be double of the length of the uh, instrument or length of the string. This one wavelength equals to the length of the string. This one, the wavelength is two thirds of length of the string. And so that means the length of the string is a three, one and a half waves. So these two numbers are inversely related. Okay, so the wavelength is one half of the string. So that means L, the total length of the string has two wavelengths. The total length of the string is two and a half wavelength. That means one wavelength is two fifths of the string and so forth. So for the nth harmonic, the wavelength is two divided by n times L and the, the length is n divided by two of the wavelength. Standing wave in water. So standing wave can be produced in water. How is it produced in water? Standing wave in water are produced most often by periodic water waves interfere with the reflected wave. So there must be a barrier over here that's reflected wave coming back the two interferes. So look over here, you have a standing wave. So this is guy surfing on a standing wave. This is a standing wave. Let's take a look at this example. What is the number of antinodes in the standing wave shown in the diagram? Remember, antinodes is either up or down. So if you just count up, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven antinodes. So the nodes will be eight. Oh, this should be an S at the end. Uh, let's take a look at another example. The diagram represents a wave moving toward to the right. Which wave shown below could produce a standing wave with the original wave. So to produce standing wave, you must have the same exact wave. So it's not one or four. The other condition to produce the standing wave is they have to move in the opposite direction. So the answer has to be two. Okay, another example. So two waves traveling in the same medium and having the same wavelength interferes to create a standing wave. What is the distance between between the two consecutive nodes on this standing wave? Well, the distance between the consecutive nodes is half of the wavelength. So the answer is two. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.